24? Did you think he was gonna make it to 21? Mm -hmm. You feeling like that's a possibility now? Mm -hmm. In the school and in the community, you solve your conflicts through violence, and that's the way the rural revolved. I knew, you know, a lot of times that if we just had a place to talk and work it out, and we could save the student, we could save the, the teacher, we could save the, the disrespect, that it could be resolved peacefully. To have that not exist was really uh, kind of like really hurt. As a judge, I take an oath to follow the law. And so imposing a sentence in a criminal matter is something that I would do. We were getting a lot of kids in the court. They would have disciplinary problems at the school and the schools would call the police. We would punish people and then they would get out, go back into their communities and within a very short period of time they were recidivating. And it was just appalling to me to see 70% of those youth in a very short period of time, I'm talking three to six months, return to the system after they had been punished, something was wrong. Restorative Justice for Oakland Youth is a project of a fiscal sponsor of community initiatives. Our mission is to interrupt youth cycles of violence, incarceration, and wasted lives by promoting a cultural shift um, away from punitive responses and toward restorative responses. We have chosen to focus on building restorative justice practices and values in schools, a really critical point of entry. Jasmine, when I first met her, was a very innocent young girl. She pretty much followed all the rules. I just acted like the other students, or even worse. She was one of the feistiest students that I had. I mean, get all in their faces aggressively and, and talk bad to them. All conflicts were dealt with firm hand by the administration. And so it happens, you get suspension, you come back to school, the conflict reoccurred again, and more suspension happened. We don't get to the bottom of the fights, we just suspend them. It's a misconception that if I punish this kid hard enough, they won't do what I punished them for doing. The only interaction that these kids are having one-on-one -on -one with teachers is when they're getting in trouble. And that's what the outside world too. They don't have cops pulling up to them asking them are they having a good day today. They, they walk over dead bodies on their way to and from school every single day. And nobody stops and asks them are they okay. Studies show that when youth are expelled or suspended from school, their chances of engaging in violence and of being incarcerated skyrocket. The idea is to create alternatives to zero tolerance. They simply have a chance to communicate. So I think what I've done and why have I done it? Like stealing, talking about inappropriate stuff, not being respectful. Where did you learn that behavior? Learned my lesson. I found with doing restorative justice work, we interrupt that cycle. At first it's wowing to him. It's like unbelievable that this man is asking me about my personal life in a way that seems like he actually cares. When I used to get suspended, my mom, she asked me, why did you get suspended? I'll try to tell her. And then she'll tell me to shut up. And then she said, why did you get suspended? And then she'll tell me to shut up, be quiet, and then that'll be it. So that's why I never did talk to him. That's why I lied. So then you need that? Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Last year for my birthday, I was living on the streets. He wanted this one to be good. So we set up a deal. If I stay in school, he would give me the best birthday party I ever had. No one ever said that. That you do good, I'll do something good for you. For the past, I don't know how many years, nobody's had these conversations with them. Where would you want your party to be? Started justice at this school has been like a godsend. Now there's dialogue in the building that says, hey, there's another way to deal with it. I can trust him. 
and he can trust me. The idea is a person responsible for the harm gets to really connect with the person who they harmed and they get to see the pain that they caused, they get to empathize and they get to apologize and, and make it right. It unfolds right in front of you so it's like you can't miss it. I've realized even with the fights, if I can sit them down and get them in front of each other, after 10 minutes of listening to me ask questions, I can leave out of the room. They'll solve the problem themselves. And sometimes I might add in, all right, now let's hug, let's do a group hug. And it's kind of funny to them the same way it is right now, like let's do a group hug, but I'm serious. You see only the half of it. You don't see the whole thing. Because when you're younger, you just think people picking on you, but they're really trying to make you do better. Now she's a leader as a 10th grader at McClyman's High School. She knows the circle process and she's teaching the 12th graders. You can use one of your quotes or something like that. You'd be like, I don't want to fight. She actually got, almost got into a fight with a young man and all Miss Bendich had to do was just put her hands on her shoulder and say, Jasmine, you know how to do this differently, right? And she just completely calmed down. We found that suspensions after restorative justice was implemented declined by 87% and reported expulsions dropped to zero. It made me very proud that we can change even one life uh, in the way that we helped uh, to change Jasmine's. I'm just staying out of trouble and that's my New Year's revolution. <laughs> Behavior is starting to go back to good. I'm trying to pick up my grades and I feel good about school. Go back at the time, I never thought I'd see a face. Ain't a woman alive that could take my mama's place. Suspended from school, I'm scared to go home. I was a fool with the big boys breaking all the rules. Shed tears with my baby sister over the years.